Mind mapping is a great way to outline a project, especially when it's a project that has a bunch of different parts that connect in some way. Mind mapping is a way to lay out and connect different parts of a project. It's a visual outlining tool. I like to use these for big projects. Oftentimes when I'm working on either a big video or a big whatever kind of project, I, like, I have a notes document with all my thoughts and like different pieces and stuff, but it's not in any particular order. I use mind mapping to kind of organize all of these thoughts into one place and then kind of connect everything and show how everything is going to be laid out in that project. And I've done this for a bunch of different types of projects. It's not just videos that I've done this for. I've done this for uh, designing websites. I've done this for big IT projects, like when I had to design a network. Uh, I've done this for, uh, oh, my wallpaper pack that I put out at the end of last year. I, I built a mind map for how I wanted that flow to work. What's great about a mind map is it's a visual outline, but you can easily move things around in it. So if you want to change up the order, if you want something in a very specific spot, it's really easy to do that. The app I use is called MindNode. In my opinion, it's the best mind mapping app on the App Store. It has a great design, supports all the modern iPad features, and most importantly, it has incredible keyboard shortcut support. Seriously, you can control the whole app, the whole mind map right from the keyboard on the iPad. Uh, and, and there's also a Mac app as well. If you prefer to do mind mapping on the Mac, you can as well. But uh, uh, since I work from the iPad, obviously I'm doing it from here. When you start mind mapping, you start with the main node. Typically for me, this is just the project name. You can create more than one main node if you wish. You can have as different maps in the same project, uh, but this isn't something I do. I, I can see the benefit for others, but it's never been something that I needed. So you have that main node, and now you create branches off of that main node. For example, I'm working on my iPad OS 16 walkthrough video. What I like to do is I take my notes document for iPad OS 16, basically throughout the summer, anytime I come across something new, I have a thought on something, uh, discover something, something gets changed in the betas, I put it in here. This is a large notes document and it's very unorganized because I just dump stuff in here. It's not the order in which I'm going to talk about it in my final walkthrough. So I wanna be able to take all of those thoughts and kind of organize them out and lay them out so I know how I'm going to talk about them in my script. So I'll put the notes document next to mind map and with iPad OS 16 and external monitor support, this is really easy to do now. It, it's, it's such a, it wasn't terrible before, but having all of that extra space, is just, oh, it's so nice. So once I have my documents side by side, I start writing out the branches. This is all the system features and apps that have been changed in the update. I start with all the top level stuff here. So I put them in the order that I wanna talk about them in the script. I just write them all out and then you can drag them and move them around. And if for some reason you miss something, you could just hit the plus button again and just add another node. From here, I'll go through that notes document again and start creating child branches for the specific system features and apps that have been changed. These, This is where I start to get a little more detailed. So this is stuff that includes new features, fixes, keyboard shortcuts, and basically any other change. Again, extremely detailed here. If there's extremely big features and there's lots of parts to them, I'll create more than one node. You can create child nodes for your child nodes and it, it can just keep going down in a generational sense if we just stick with that parental child uh, terminology. Like I mentioned, when working in MindNode, there are a ton of keyboard shortcuts. So you can create a new node at the same level just by hitting the enter key. Tab will create a sub node Option tab will shift everything down a level and then like create a new node above that position that you are at. There is a ton of keyboard shortcuts in my node and like with all iPad apps, you can hold down the command key to see all the keyboard shortcuts. When creating these child nodes, if I have any specific notes on these features or changes, I can make notes right for that node. You can edit a note and add as much text as you want to it. You can do this by hitting the edit note button, 
right clicking or hitting command shift K on the keyboard. You'll get a notes section here and this is where I put in all the extra detail. I keep things like system requirements, bugs, steps to enable this specific feature that the note is about or any weird behaviors that I might've come across in my testing. After you create a note, that'll put a note symbol in that node. So that way it'll symbolize, hey, there's a note here. You can tap on that note icon and it'll bring the notes field back up or in the little command window, you can tap on the notes section and that will also bring up the notes as well. And it's not just notes you can add to a specific node. You can add tasks, you can add links, and you can even add drawings. This video is sponsored by Paper Lake. Paper Lake is an iPad accessory and one of my favorites. What it is is a matte screen protector that gives a sort of textured feeling when you're using the Apple Pencil. So it feels a lot more like pencil and paper and not plastic on glass. It's a much better feeling and if you use the Apple Pencil at all, I highly recommend it. It's also great when you're working outside because it is a matte screen protector. It helps cut down on that light reflection when you're using your iPad outside or in a really bright space. Paper Lake is one of my favorite iPad accessories and I will put a link to it in the description below for you to go check it out. If you wanna connect two different nodes together that aren't connected by the typical mind map, there is a connections feature. So select the first node and select connect, and then you select the second node that you wish to connect it to and it draws an arrow between the two. So that way, if you have things that aren't, you know, you have your mind map mapped out, but you know, thing A connects to thing B, but you know, they're not in the, even in the same trees, you can still connect those two, which is a, just kind of a nice diagram feature. When creating a mind map in MindNode, you can actually use stickers or images as the main node if you'd like. Personally, I just prefer the project name because I just find that to be simpler and more straightforward. You can also drag these stickers or images to be a part of any other node as well. So if you'd like to kind of spruce it up a bit, you can but I just prefer text. There is also an outline mode in MindNode. You can tap on this and you can basically see a outline hierarchical view of your mind map. When I'm all done with a mind map, I export it. You do this through the share sheet options and there's a ton of different ways you can save it. You can save it as an image or PDF, so many different options in there, but I like the markdown option. This exports it as plain text, but in, as an outline. And it does it in the exact way that I want it to, in the way that I write my scripts. It even will export any notes that you've added as well. This way, when it comes time for me to start writing my scripts, I'm not doing double the work. Now, MindNode is a subscription app, and it's one that I happily pay for because it's an app that's getting updates all the time. It's really well built, and for me, it's worth it. I understand not everyone is a fan of subscription apps, and maybe I should do a video on why subscription apps even exist. Uh, but if you prefer something that's just paid up front, iThoughts is another good mind mapping app. I just prefer MindNode myself. So that's kind of it. That's how I mind map projects on my iPad. If you've ever done any sort of mind mapping or are curious about it and you're gonna try it out now, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.